Morning, everybody. Uh, as it says on the tin, I'm Chris, uh, and I'm at Ultra Leap. For those that uh, don't recognize the name uh, immediately, we recently rebranded about a month ago. We were Ultra Haptics, um, and then post an acquisition of Leap Motion uh, in May, uh, we, uh, we rebranded to, to Ultra Leap. So, Although they're two significant technologies, the, um, the theory is reasonably simple. The, the idea is that we're moving the, the sort of the computer, uh, the human computer interface is moving from uh, mainframe computers, if you're looking over a timeline, uh, mainframe computers, uh, large laptops to mobile phones, tablets, and the next it, uh, you know, iteration of that will be spatial computing. Uh, if you, believe, if you believe that trend, and you know, most of the, the analysts' m and activity shows that to be the case, uh, our belief is that we have uh, two, two of the core technologies in that area. So one is uh, the, on, the ultra, on the haptic side, we create touch in midair. So what that means is if you take ultrasound and you emit ultrasound uh, in a very specific manner, you can create a tactile haptic feedback in midair. So not on your tablets, that we've all got haptics on our phones. Anything in midair, that sits in our, in our realm. Uh, on the other side, uh, a core technology is uh, the tracking. So you need very, very, very uh, accurate hand tracking to, to operate in this spatial uh, area. So in that spatial interaction, your core technologies are going to be voice, uh, voice u uh, user interface, the haptics, you know, non-wearable, genuine haptics in midair, and this uh, very accurate tracking, uh, hand tracking. We have the two best and leading technologies in the world in two of those three core fundamental spaces. So the plan, the vision, is to be the epicenter of that move, that technology shift. A little bit more on the two technologies. Um, so we have hundreds of patents on both sides of the company, on both of the, those two core technologies. Um, on the, we'll start on the left, on the hand tracking side. Uh, the development has taken 10 years, over $100 million, and there are now 350,000 developers working on that technology to, to accelerate it. Uh, on the haptic side, on the touch side, uh, we've got, again, hundreds of patents uh, down to the absolute core fundamental physics. Um, and we have uh, over 80 universities now working on top of our platform to create the technologies and the interfaces of the future. So what does this mean market-wise uh, and, and in economic terms? So we are, there are a multitude of markets that we can go after. Um, I've listed four here. These are the four that we have uh, commercial engagement with, we have license royalty agreements in, and those are the four that I'm focusing our sales team and BD team on at the moment. Um, there are a multitude of other markets that we can go after. Um, however, uh, the concern is obviously sort of magpie syndrome, and they just chase the newest, shiniest uh, little toy. And so we're focusing on these four markets, executing on these four markets, and then thereafter we can go after medical devices, uh, industrial applications, the multitude of others that are available to us. So uh, often I get a question, you know, so what? Why is this important? It's important because in each of these markets that we're going after, they're, they're, you know, the, there are very real drivers and very real value drivers. Um, starting at digital out of home, advertising, you know, your, your main, a big driver in those markets is uh, ad recall and retention rate. Um, we have, uh, you know, the, there, are, there are a multitude of statistics from our customers that show that we are a step change in that uh, recall and retention rate over existing technologies. To have a more immersive, engaging experience is highly valuable to advertisers. Looking in the automotive sector, um, if you have a, you know, most of the cars, well, a lot of the cars these days have your beautiful flat screen, um, you know, uh, touch pads uh, that you engage with. The problem with that is your only feedback, really, is to, go, is to actually look at it when you're engaging with that, which is not particularly safe. So there's a very big safety angle in automotive. Clearly, if you're looking at the touch screen and you're not, you know, I always think to my, uh, go back 20 years and you've got the 3 Series BMW, you grab the volume button and you turn it up. 
if, you're, if you don't have something that gives you that tactile feedback, you have to look at it to know what your engagement is. Uh, with a button in Madea, where you stick your hand up, button hits into your hand, and you can turn up the volume, you can play with the sat nav, you can work on the heating with different tactile sensations. It means that you're watching the road at 70 miles an hour and not watching the screen. So big safety angle in automotive. Uh, and then in your AR, VR gaming space, uh, the problem those markets have had to date is that the technology just hasn't lived up to the human natural experience that we expect. Uh, our technology in that space is the only technology in the world that can give you a uh, latency of less than 20 milliseconds, which is where it's imperceptible to the human, uh, human interaction. So very big drivers in each of the markets. Um, yeah. A little history lesson on Ultraleap. Um, we have, we've raised 60 million, 65 million to date sterling. Uh, that excludes uh, the cash that uh, Leap Motion raised prior to our acquisition. Uh, we have numerous awards uh, and now have a team of 155 people. Um, on top of the, the 155 employees, we've got, a, uh, I believe, a very strong uh, advisor base around us. Um, two notable ones on our, our non-execs. We have two ex-FTSE 250 CEOs on our, on our board as non-execs. Um, the as I was saying, the technology now is caught up and the markets are maturing. So uh, in the last six months, we've seen a noticeable step change in the way in which we're able to apply the commercialization of our technology. And so uh, you can see, uh, you know, neatly so, top right of the screen, there are uh, numerous new deals that we're, we've uh, executed on, certainly in the last six months and accelerating uh, much more rapidly even over the last six weeks. To give you a little bit of a snapshot of the numbers, um, again, on that six-month timeline, if you look bottom left, it just shows the uh, transition, the maturity and transition of the business model. We, we've able to accelerate or to, to restructure the business model to be far more recurring revenue-based, in, in, uh, certainly over the last six months even. Um, and that's driven by our sort of predominantly licensed royalty uh, model in, in most of our markets. Um, Revenues, you know, clearly that's easy on a low revenue base. Uh, revenues are, you know, tear up in your uh, ubiquitous and expected hockey stick. Uh, the comfort I have as the CFO on those numbers is, at the moment, we've already signed or are in legals for to have secured the majority of our revenues for next year. So, the, you know, the uptick, the dramatic, the uptick is is real and and absolutely um, sort of executable, if you like. On the commercial path, to date, we've had lots of, we've done lots of development work with numerous partners, uh, big name partners, and we're now able to convert those into commercial licenses and royalties. The most recent of which announced a couple of weeks ago is our deal with Vario, uh, who have uh, in the market the world's top uh, VR headset. Thanks. Thank you.